thank you for joining us. I thought before the show that it'd be great if we give you a little context to why we're doing it and what we're doing here. Now, about a year ago, the Somerset County Library System asked our band, the Roadside Grace, to perform on an outdoor stage, you know, in the summertime, and it sounded really wonderful. And they wanted us to perform a record that we wrote about 10 years ago. Now, why this specific record, and I have one vinyl copy left of it in my house, and it's called We Can Take Care of Ourselves. Now, this record was actually inspired by the book The Outsiders by Essie Hinton. And what we did was we tried to use the characters and their feelings and the themes inside of the book to create a song cycle um, because we felt so strongly about the book when we were young readers and we still feel probably even more strongly about it as adults. You could read this book every year of your life and I think still find new things uh, to hold on to and to inspire you. Now, the Somerset County Library System has stuck with us throughout this whole experience and what's happening in the world and they said we would still like you in whatever capacity that you can do or muster up, can you continue to have this show so it, it's not ideal uh, but I think we did the best that we could do and we recorded each of our own parts in our own respective homes so we have homes throughout New Jersey that you'll see on the screen and then one also in Rhode Island and since we were doing it all from our own homes it was difficult to do every single song off the record uh, but we did manage to do a significant part of it so if there's some other songs that you'd like to hear um, that maybe we don't play tonight you can go ahead and stream the record on any of the streaming sites, the music streaming sites that you use. Somerset County is celebrating their 90th anniversary, so congratulations. Our record is 10 years old, so congratulations. And there's another one. The Outsiders is over 50 years old, and this copy, I have a few copies of The Outsiders. This copy is a really awesome copy if you, if you want to go ahead and purchase purchase a, a copy of The Outsiders. It has a lot of bonus material. This is the 50th anniversary and throughout the show, in between songs, I'll try to come in and give you some context about how the song relates to the book because I know we have a lot of readers uh, in middle school in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade who have read the book recently and, and are going to be watching um, this show because they read the book. I will also also show you some of the covers throughout the years um, because I just find the covers you know kind of fascinating and actually you know what why don't we start to show with the first sentence the first sentence is pretty amazing the book also ends with the same sentence chapter one when I stepped out into the bright sunlight from the darkness of the movie house, I had only two things on my mind. Paul Newman and a ride home. All right. I hope you enjoyed our show. Wherever we lie, dip our feet in the water. You're looking for me, you better look outside. I won't be staying in tonight. Sitting up here on the roof of a porch, just watching your. Yeah. 
next song that you're going to hear is called Glory. Now, from the very start, uh, we knew we wanted to make a song just for Darry. So this, this is, from the viewpoint of Darry, the entire song. Now, Darry is, you know, a, a 20-year-old kid, basically. Uh, a kid who has had to grow up rather fast. Uh, both parents have been killed, and he is raising both Pony Boy and Soda Pop. And and all of the other uh, you know, misfit kids who are hanging out as well. Um, Derry is, you know, he, he's an ex-football player, so we were thinking of glory as also the glory that you would find in, you know, in life and, and in your triumphs and your celebration, but we are also thinking of glory as um, somebody he's speaking to, um, probably a friend um, whose name could have been glory, as he's kind of like a, a rare moment where he's, thinking about his life, you know, um, if I keep growing up, he's, he's aware of everything, he's aware, I believe that, you know, he's putting all of his faith, his whole life, um, into Pony Boy, um, I'm sure Soda Pop's gonna do all right, but I think, I think Darry really believes that, you know, Pony Boy is the one who he's, he's really fighting, fighting the most for, and that's why I think Darry is so tough on Pony Boy, and, you know, Darry is, is the, the epitome of uh, tough love. So here's Glory from Darry's Viewpoint. Talk about work like it was holy. I lost things I can't replace. Teach you.
So our next song is called Double Feature, and uh, the song, the setting of the song takes place, or it starts in the drive-in. So if you could kind of put yourself and imagine yourself in the drive-in, or use this excellent cover to The Outsiders uh, to put yourself there. And this is the only song on the record where we, we tried to get into the character's the viewpoint of the socius. You know, it's much more interesting um, in the book and much more interesting, I think, writing songs from the viewpoint of the greaser. So we, we tried our best to just kind of put ourselves in that mindset there. And and the the social we were thinking of the most um, for, for this song was Randy. So Randy uh, is having an awakening similar to Pony Boy, and they're both kind of experiencing similar things together um, throughout the book, and it's trying to break that mold of the us versus them, this side of town versus that side of town, bad versus good, um, poor versus rich, and th this is a struggle that, you know, can be relatable at all times. And remember, this book is over 50 years, but I think these are still things we're all struggling with. And the expectations, you know, of society, of your family, of your friends, or what you feel like you've been born into, um, can be changed. Or hopefully, you know, these characters, this story could inspire that, you know, we can break the mold um, that has been, you know, kind of formed around us, you know, if we want to, if that mold is something that we think uh, should be broken. And, and, you know, the line in the chorus, uh, you know, I think the, the probably the best part of the song is kind of just that thought of, you know, I'm going to fight. Uh, I don't want to fight, uh, but I will. Uh, and it's just like, if you think about that a little bit more, it, it's really like I'm going to <laughs> basically 
do something against my will because I think that's what's expected of me. And even though maybe in my heart, I know I shouldn't be doing it. Double feature tonight at the driving. Sneak your friends in. The song Waiting is trying to capture the time where Johnny Cade and Pony Boy have holed themselves up in an abandoned church, you know, right after the murder. And they are waiting for, you know, Dallas to come back to tell them when it's safe to go home. This could be one of my favorite moments of the book and the movie. Uh, it just it just always to me differed so much between different than from the beginning of the plot to the end of the plot. And we have this just kind of in the middle. And this is the this is the sunset time. This is the stay gold time. This is reading the Gone with the Wind time. The time smoking cigarettes together. It's just this magical, um, surreal moment.
And teenagers are tired. We are towards the end of the book. Johnny is dead. The rumble has happened, and we were trying to capture the uh, the weariness that the characters must uh, be feeling, uh, not only from just the events that have happened to them uh, recently and, and who and what they have lost, um, but just kind of you know just being a greaser or just what their town is, is expecting or not expecting of them and how, how weary they must be of that. And there's a line in the song where it says, uh, you know, you lean one way and you stay that way for the rest of your life.
It's a little bit more complicated, maybe uh, deviates from the novel uh, slightly. Uh, I had, at the time of writing it, I had just uh, recently lost my father, so I was surely was thinking about that. And there's a verse about you know finding clues in the trunk of his car. You know that was all you know based on my own life. But for the rest of the song, I'm also thinking of you know the, the tight knit family of uh, Darry. Pony Boy and Soda Pop, and uh, you know, I'm thinking, you know, from the their viewpoint of like why maybe they're wondering why their parents didn't love them more. You know, it's it's not their fault. Or their parents are you know had, had died in a car accident, and then I also like to think about it. You know, the opposite way. Like, why couldn't I love that person more, or why couldn't have I have showed my love um, maybe better? So maybe I did love that person. You know immensely but I, I I've never found the right way to express it and I also worry that they didn't know how much that I love them I was in a belly once, waiting for Shame that the way was wrong. 
We Occupy Each Other was always Cherry's song. For a long time while we were writing the record, it just was called Cherry's song. And it's actually from the viewpoint of Pony Boy and how he maybe is thinking about Cherry, how he feels about Cherry and the kind of com complicated relationship that they may have. And I also you know, took a little inspiration from my own relationship uh, with my wife. And then I also like the idea of, you know, we have these things that, you know, that we're told, that we accept, that we read, and we know they're facts, you know, like the, <laughs> the world is spinning uh, constantly. And, and the stars that we see, they are dead. Uh, but when, when you take some time to think about that, sometimes it's hard to process and, and the world may be a little bit easier to process. Uh, when we find that other person in our life that we've been searching for. Yeah, I don't think the stars are as far as they say they are. Dead and dark and I don't think the world Spins around To you walking Walking to And I just roll With the night Let my heart song jail has had, had many lives to it before we recorded it or put it on a record 
It was mainly just a song that we performed live after the show was over. So we would unplug all our instruments. We'd all take an acoustic guitar or a drum or whatever we had, and we would perform in the crowd. Now, this was originally thought of and designed because we had toured enough to know that we were going to continually play bars. And while you're playing bars on tour, out of your own state, and you know no one, you start to realize that people are at bars to have fun, to escape, to be with their friends, to have a drink. And the last thing on their list is to watch the band that's playing in the back corner that they have no idea who they are. So jail helped us kind of bring together that crowd, maybe get them to pay a little bit more attention. And now in retrospect, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe we should have done jail first and then play the show because there were definitely some moments where you could see some of the crowd kind of pay a little bit more attention. Uh, maybe we won over a few people at the end. There was also some precarious situations um, by playing jail. I mean, I definitely remember a night where I was standing up on the bar, singing my heart out because it's all acoustic. And I remember a fan <laughs> continually hitting my head and I probably had just enough to drink where it didn't bother me as much as it probably should have. This song was definitely written during a period of time where I could not get enough of Bob Dylan's self-portrait, especially his cover of the moonshine classic, Copper Kettle. They'll catch you by the smoke. Coast is probably one of the oldest Roadside Grave songs that we continually play live at our shows. And if we're going to keep with tonight's literary theme, uh, I was writing that song while also reading Dave Edgar's first book, A Heartbreaking Work of Staggering Genius. I added a little bit of my own life, of course, to the song as well. And I think the song has uh, longevity, you know, to, to a lot of people because I think if you could take the chorus and, you know, just ignore the verse or whatever's happening in the verse. And if you just take the course, it could, you know, could be applied uh, to anybody's life. You know, the, just the simple statement, the simple thought of, I have a heart that won't quit, that won't break, no matter what you do. Face. 
We Have Loved is the last song on our brand new record. And, and the song really just is trying to capture that feeling of, you know, maybe late at night or early in the morning when you, have, when you have all those thoughts in your head and, you know, you're wondering, when is it time, you know, to give up? You know, I have loved and I have lost and I have walked and I've been stopped. And, you know, all the things that we try day in and day out, and some succeed and some are failure. And when, when are things too big uh, for us to take? And, you know, and I, and I hope the comfort uh, in that sentiment, in sentiment is that, you know, it's never, it's never time to give up. You always continue loving and you always continue losing. And that's just life.
it's time Lay it down We have loved And we have lost I think it's time Lay it down We have walked and we've been stopped. I think it's time. Lay it down. I think it's time. Lay it down. And we have won I think it's time Lay it down We have loved And we have lost I think it's time Lay it down Let's Get Lost is also on our new record. This song has no literary connections. This is just purely based on an evening I spent with my wife. We were in Hardwick, Vermont, and uh, we were surely lying on our backs on the grass and, and not on the hood of a car. And we were looking at the stars and the night sky, and for sure the stars in the night sky in Vermont look a little bit different than the stars in the night sky in New Jersey. And of course we had a lot of thoughts, a lot of questions, and we also spoke a lot about our parents that evening. We were wondering, as we are parents ourselves, you know, are we doing it right? Because we have no idea what we're doing. And, and looking back on, were, were our parents doing it right? What, what, what might have went wrong? Or what was right? And, and the words, my favorite words probably, my favorite three words ever put together, uh, just like the classic Chet Baker song, came to my mind. Let's get lost. Did they love each other? 
just as much as we do I guess we'll never know just what went wrong did your father ever say I Wasted My Life is a song on our brand new record. This song was inspired by a poem I read. A poem I read probably about 25 years ago by James Wright called Lying on a Hammock in William Duffy's Farm. And in that poem, like every good poem, the poet is just describing what he sees and describing what he sees really well and it's beautiful and line by line you can just picture yourself on a farm lying on a hammock and seeing everything that he sees and then the very last line like a smack in the face it ends like this i have wasted my life
just wanted to thank everybody for watching. Thanks for being here with us. This was a really fun and wild challenge to accomplish uh, during these times in our own homes. And if you've never read the book, The Outsiders, hopefully, someday you will. And if not, if you want to cheat, go ahead and watch the movie. The movie's awesome. It's directed by Francis Ford Coppola. And, and it was actually inspired. Uh, he made it, uh, for those of you who don't know, by a librarian. Just so cool. <laughs> so a librarian, you know, in the early 80s, and I believe a little bit over 100 students signed like a little small petition and mailed it to them. Mailed it to him, sorry. And, and that prompted him to read the book and to buy the rights and not only to make the movie, but then to go ahead and also make uh, Rumblefish, uh, another one of S.E. Hinton's books right after that with, with a lot of the same actors and the same crew. So again, just want to thank the Somerset County Library System for inviting us and, and, and thinking of this uh, idea and happy 90th anniversary. And to all of you, during this time, these strange times, I hope you're doing well. And again, from all of us, thank you for listening.